All right, so I've had a pedal board for a number of years. It had five or so gain stages on it. It used a ton of cables, it had a switching system integrated. Honestly, it was pretty heavy, it was pretty big. There were some stages where I ran into a situation where I couldn't fit it where I was supposed to be placed. This iteration of my pedal board also had a lot of experimentation on my part where I was trying to mess with different kinds of power, like the Yukon power. I was trying to, you know, get an IO box incorporated into it. And then of course you want to plug in the cables to the pedal board rather than into your first pedal because that's cool. But recently I've kind of felt like things have changed in the way that I approach having a pedal board as a gigging modern musician. Nowadays, I feel like I'm not really wanting to bring as much stuff. Uh, I feel like I have less time to set up. And quite frankly, it's hard to argue with how convenient and easy it is to have all of your presets loaded into here and have a very consistent sound, especially when you're on gigs on in-ears. 90% of the shows that I'm doing right now are using these things. And it's, it's an interesting thing. I've never really been much of an in-ear guy, but I found that the amp and pedal board route, at least for my in-ear mixes, have been less consistent than being able to show up with a quad cortex or a Kemper or an amp in the box pedal, especially now that the amp in the box pedals have gotten so good. So really, I'm starting to feel like my old pedal board, which by the way, if you haven't seen what my old pedal board looks like, you can check out the video on it right here. I really feel like the fun of pedals right now is being able to have the creative outlet of turning knobs and coming up with a cool sound that you might not otherwise find in a preset. So I'm starting to conceptualize pedal board iteration number six or something at this point. Um, and I have a few key things I wanna hit on. I wanted to have a smaller footprint. I wanna incorporate an amp in the box pedal. Um, I wanted to have a switch mode power supply. And then I think I'm gonna give it a go on a flat board as opposed to an angled board. I've always used angled pedal boards like the pedal train, so I think it might be a cool move to do a flat board with a two-tier option. We're gonna get into this build and I'll demo all the sounds at the end of this video, but if you wanna know anything more about how I like to build my pedal boards, some of the tips and tricks that I've found along the way, check out my Pedal Board 101 course. It's a really low barrier to entry course that takes you through a complete pedal board build uh, it's very simple. It's meant to be able to use the stuff that you might have at home to build up a tour ready pedal board. So in terms of the mainstay pedals that are going to be consistent on my board, we're going with a lot of the classics, but also a couple new ones. So starting off with the Strymon Timeline and the Strymon Big Sky, these were used plenty on my last board. They're going to be coming over. Um, on the Strymon Bridge, which is only complete with the new edition of the Strymon Mobius, which is replacing my Eventide H9. Already, I feel like this is a better fit for me. I'm really enjoying a few of the sounds that I'm getting out of this. And then another classic, a carryover from my last board, uh, the Leal Volume Pedal. This is going to go right before the Strymon pedals. Uh, it's going to go after the drive section, right before the modulation, reverb, and delay effects. For the tuner, just a Sonic Research Turbo Tuner Mini. It's probably my favorite tuner I've ever used. Um, just a really quality strobe style tuner. And then the new pedals that work as a little bit of the centerpiece of this board are the 29 pedals Yuna and the 29 pedals Wamp. This is an input buffer, this is an output buffer, both kind of boost frequencies that are supposed to be pleasing to guitar players. So these are gonna act as the first and last pedal of my chain. I will not be using the send and return on either of these. And then for power, for the first board of mine, I'm not using a Voodoo Labs power supply. I'm actually gonna be using the Strymon Zuma and the accompanying uh, Strymon Ohi. These power supplies are just making the most sense for my board right now. So with this pedal board build, we're not gonna be using any MIDI for the Strymon pedals. We're just gonna be relying on the, you know, three switches that each one of them has to switch between the sounds. I think, I think that's gonna work a little bit better for my workflow. I got the custom made Strymon bridge from a company called Fix Pedal Boards. They're available on Reverb. I'll put a little link in the description. The flat board I was actually able to get off of Reverb as well. It's uh, 24 by 12 inches. Because we're working smaller, but we're still gonna try and incorporate as much as possible, the Leal volume pedal is going to go all the way to the edge of the board. It's actually gonna kinda hang a little over 
but that's fine. I'm actually not going to be using the tuner output of the volume pedal. Instead, the tuner is going to be in line. I'll discuss why in a sec. The Zuma is a switch mode power supply, which means that it can take international power as needed. I'm not going to be having any pedals share power for reasons that, again, I'll get to in a second. The big unique thing about this pedal board is I'm using a hybrid, like fixed mixed thing going on with pedal placements. So when I say that, I have dual lock on the Strymon bridge, the Strymon timeline, Big Sky, and Mobius. I've got it on the Leal, I've got it on the tuner, I've got it on the power, and I've got it on the 29 pedals, Una, and Wamp. The rest of the pedals are actually gonna be on just plain Velcro, industrial Velcro. And that is because the pedals that I mentioned with dual lock are gonna be locked in at all times. Those are kind of the non-movables. The ones with Velcro are going to be able to be swapped out. Those are gonna be the primary gain stages. Those are gonna be the compressors. Those are gonna be kind of the random modulations. It's also where I'm going to have the option of using an amp in the box pedal, which for this instance, I'm going to be using the Universal Audio 65 Dream, which is basically like a Fender Deluxe, Deluxe Reverb. The Strymon Ohi, the smaller kind of extension to the power supply is also going to be on Velcro. The reason being if I need to move around some pedals and I've got maybe a bigger pedal like the Klon or like the 65 Dream, I need to be able to move that power supply around to make all the pedals fit. That's also the reason that I'm not sharing any ports is because first of all, I've got more than enough ports, but not enough to just work off of the Zuma. But also I just don't wanna mess around with, you know, the problem of joint cables and jumpers and if I'm going to be swapping as much as I am. And the tuner pedal is going to be secured in uh, and in line because it's going to act as the start of the mix pedals. So as I you know, move something around at the beginning of that chain, I just wanna be able to have an easy place to plug in the cable um, as things move around. <laughs> So that's the new board. Uh, I have to admit the the weight of it is probably just as heavy as the last board. I think the flat board has a little bit more mass to it, just given that it's made out of wood rather than aluminum. Maybe something to consider if you're thinking about doing a flat board as well. So far it's worked really well. I used it on a recent live record in a studio. I had it going through my two rock over here uh, that was set up in an ISO room and the pedal board was effective. I was able to get tones that I needed out of it quickly. Um, it, was, it was great. It was a very useful pedal board and I think I'll be able to get some good use out of it for three to four years before 
I tear it up in the middle of the night again and decide I need something new. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.